So my name is Anna Lewis, I'm a, a designer maker and artist based in Swansea and I'm also a, a lecturer on the BA Design Crafts course um, at Swansea College of Art, UWTSD. So I study at Middlesex University, which I did my degree in jewellery design. Um, and then I came back to Swansea to set up my own studio. Um, I'm working a lot at this period with um, printed feathers, um, large body pieces and more kind of smaller saleable work. So I exhibited um, a lot all over the world really um, and doing amazing events like uh, Chelsea Crafts Fair and Origin um, where I met a lot of clients and things. Um, been lucky enough to have a lot of, of press. Um, my work's been featured in a lot of publications. Um, so it's been a really long journey over the over the last 23 years um, to this point. So my practice um, for the last sort of 23 years has been concerned with the realm of jewellery but in the, the broader sense of the word. So it's interpreting jewellery and body adornment um, using a whole range of different materials. So I do work with things like silver but mostly I'll work with a lot of mixed media found natural materials such as layered um, feathers which I will hand dye or print on so they're very like labour intensive processes um, and other materials um, like leather and wood have, have come into the into play as well as a kind of fabrics um, and most recently I've collaborated on a project working with glass um, with one of my ex students one of my graduates um, so we've been casting glass which is a very labour intensive process um, and layering it up and they've got a synergy um, with some of my feather sculptures. A lot of the inspiration behind my work can come from a range of sources so historically it's been to do with the idea of memory and sort of um, the importance of objects in our life and how we keep things and embed importance and um, memorial into objects um, and then that stemmed into more research that's developed into the idea of um, almost like the magic that's in an energy that's embedded in an object so it's looking at superstitions and the way things are regarded as amulets um, and that could be quite protective um, and you know th the importance of objects interpreting who we are as people um, that's grown into a large body of research which I did for my MA which was to do with um, death and beauty um, and using death as a way of um, making sense of the world through beauty, through decorating death or death as decoration. Um, it's tied in with the idea of our relationship with, with animals, the human, animal and nature um, and how I wanted to capture the beauty of something before it faded forever. Um, so some of my um, feather sculptures, they interact with the body, but they can be seen both on and off the body. So it's not jewellery in a traditional sense, but they are wearable or they balance on the body and can be worn in several different ways. Um, they're deliberately made to sort of confuse the viewer. So birds have always been a reoccurring theme in my work and bird-like forms and bird-like structures and the idea of layering. Um, but these sort of more recent feather forms are quite confusing because they remind you of the animal, but they're not an animal. They are just sculptures that are layered with feathers. But people are like, is that a bird? And I can't see the head and where are the feet? And, you know, they're strange twisted forms that interact with the body, but also interact with each other. So there's also a play on the idea of, of relationships. Um, also, the larger sort of head pieces I did would it's tied in with the idea of veiling, so veiling the face. Um, so it's about a breakdown of identity as well. Um, quite often things that fit in the mouth. So it's that not being able to communicate. So um, I started working a lot with photographers and um, creating videos with collaborating with dancers, for example. Um, and it was about a celebration of the body and movement, but also conveying the emotions in the pieces. So it became much more about the story around the piece itself. So, you know, I always say to my students, the presentation of your work is as important as the work itself. So the photography and the video of my work 
is absolutely key and I often design and develop the idea through working in those processes. Research should be at the front of everything that you do. Uh, again, I nag my students to like research, research. So to really underpin the idea. So I love research. It's something I do constantly. So, you know, I'm constantly looking for ideas, whether I'm traveling, I've got a huge collection of books, which I absolutely adore. Um, so I'm not just looking to, you know, the world of jewelry for inspiration. I'm looking at a really broad range of sources. Um, which could be anything from architecture to something quite historical. I'm an avid visitor of, of museums. I love looking at kind of curious collections like a natural history museum, like the Pitt Rivers. So very strange, again, magical kind of objects or things that were meant to, I don't know, fade. So I'm quite interested in man's um, obsession really with documenting the world and uh, you know trying to control it through that but ultimately you can't control anything um, so collections of things are very very interesting to me artifacts um, and I do collect quite a lot of things myself so it's important that I'm surrounded by quite curious um, kind of objects in my own home um, so my own kind of house and studio has become um, a little bit of a a curious museum in itself so it's it's almost like an open sketchbook in terms of the inspiration behind it. In terms of working processes it could be that I work in a number of places so I work at home a lot it might be that I need to get a big table out or I work in a studio um, I also work in the university if I'm researching um, like I said I collaborate a lot with people so it might be in the photography studio out on location somewhere um, I do like time to work alone, but I equally really enjoy bouncing ideas off other people. So, you know, when I'm teaching, I see that as an exchange of ideas as well. So it's not just me, you know, teaching a student. I feel like I learn as much from them as they do from me. Um, so, you know, we've got amazing facilities in the university and the art school. So um, I think it's important as a tutor to explore those in your own work so that it kind of really benefits your teaching delivery um, and helps the students to see what it is that you're doing and work together on that. So that was particularly important when I was working with the glass project, working closely with technicians as well, um, and really learning huge amounts of, of new processes. So. I do really enjoy um, learning about new processes and working with you know other makers, other designers, um, in order to to get more ideas out. So more recently, I've been working with digital tools. So again, seeing that as another technique, another tool. So looking at CAD and three D printing. Um, I did a residency um, a few years ago using three D printing to create kind of these layered feather structures for the body so that was an interesting process creating objects that I couldn't create by hand so the idea of almost creating an impossible object is also interesting to me as a maker um, and again seeing how I might manipulate that later on in the process by hand um, looking at you know virtual reality drawing um, even this um, notion um, of AI which is talked about a lot um, lately how as makers we could maybe use AI to collaborate with but then manipulate it further on and using our skills which obviously digital um, can't recreate. During the lockdown um, I got to refocus and I decided to explore a passion that I've always had so always been running alongside what I'm doing um, and that was to investigate designing eyewear so I'm an avid collector of sunglasses. I've got drawfuls of them. I love them. Again, it's to do with jewellery because it's about body adornment. It's something that takes up a huge section of your face. Um, so, you know, I just feel that the importance of wearing good eyewear is, is as important as wearing good jewellery or good clothing. So I started to explore that a little bit before the lockdown. I, I went and learned how to make spectacles. Um, and then I won a competition designing them in lockdown. And it just sort of spiraled from there. And I was working with um, business coach um, and started to set up my own brand um, of eyewear. So it's called Finn Eyewear. 
So I run it alongside my other work um, and I feel like they really feed and influence each other. So um, I've just launched um, a range of, of eyewear. Um, so sunglasses, and I won two awards at 100% Optical, which was very exciting, um, last month. Um, and so now I'm starting to design more collections and starting to reach out to optical stockists and press and things like that. So seeing where I could go with the eyewear, but also thinking about quite creatively, how can I manipulate that and use my skills as a maker to really kind of make these one-off bespoke or even objects that don't exist as well. Again, drawing on the importance of research in terms of how I approach eyewear, I very much approached it as an artist, as a maker. So the concept behind the brand and the designs in the first collection is all to do with line. So it's about kind of crossing lines, having a rebellious edge, and the visuals all come from lines and edges at things at the very kind of frontier of things. So the word fin, which is double F-I-N, is a Welsh word and it means border, boundary or frontier. So that again is very appealing in terms of the themes that I was looking at. So, you know, it could be that I get inspiration from looking at lines and intersections on the roads. Um, I was doing a lot of walking during this period, so it's that kind of distance and journey, um, mapping of, of space and mapping of where we navigate cities. Um, so it does have a kind of very urban edge, uh, very clean cut lines and curves and slices and facets. Um, is what really, really drives the designs behind this and the, the whole ethos and the graphics of the brand. So my current focus and future direction is is in designing the eyewear, but using my skills as a, a jewellery designer maker as well to influence that, to offer something a little bit different. So I think in terms of the eyewear, I would like to develop this very much idea of the one-off special bespoke piece and I do want to really question the involvement of digital design processes as a maker in you know how I can manipulate that and what that outcome might be so I'm really excited to see where that may go and how I can use that to influence um, the development of the work which might again go back to these larger sort of body pieces as well. Um, if I was to give advice to any up-and-coming makers, design students, I would say never overlook the importance of research and getting out into the world um, and not just relying on what you see on social media, on the internet. You know, get yourself into galleries, into museums and really investigate your market and what's out there and be inspired by fine artists and architects and you know graphic design and historical references and travel as much as you can because travel has really opened up the way that I think the way I see the world and how I interpret my designs it, it influences everything that I do um, so yeah really get out more investigate and record everything so constantly photograph everything write notes click sketches drawing is should never be underestimated, it underpins everything you do. And when I say drawing, I mean drawing in both two dimensions and three. So playing with materials as drawing, as ideas, and just keep developing and collecting and collating and building. And you're never gonna just come up with an idea. It's always the journey that you go on to get to that point. And it's the journey is never ending. So always enjoy the journey and you know, don't take a map, get lost in the woods of creativity when you start on a project.